Okay, so let's dive deep into uh, the KNN model. So first, let's talk about the classification. So classification is going to is used to predict the, the categories like, for example, the house type is that single family, condo, townhouse, etc. So those are called classification. And the KNN can be used for classification and for regression. And for classifications, KNN can also be used to to predict multiple classes. So like uh, in this case, we have three type of house types, so three classes. And we learned that from last week that um, uh, SVM and also logistic regression um, by itself can be used to, to classify two type of classes and also can be extended to classify multiple classes. But KNN can be used to for the multi-classes classification directly. Uh, so this is the rules. So basically is that when we consider more than one uh, neighbors, we use a vote to assign the majority classes. Uh, so for example here, uh, we have four neighbors. For this one, we're going to predict. So we have three single family home and also one townhouse. And in that case, uh, this house will be predicted as a single family home. So if we're looking at three neighbors for this target, so what if there is a tie? Okay, so for example, what if um, this one um, is now a, a townhouse? So if there's a tie and the way to make prediction for this one, there are several ways. The first one is that we can just pick one that randomly. Okay, so we just pick that one randomly. So because tie is still um, relatively rare, uh, so we can just random pick one as a result. Or we can wait by distance. So for example, in this case, uh, the target has shorter distance to the single family home rather than to the townhouse. So um, in that case, we can, so okay, so then this house will still be predicted as single family home because this target has shorter distance to single family homes. So that we can uh, wait by the distance. Or we can reduce the k until we find out a new unique winner. So for example, in this case, okay, here we have uh, if in this case k equals four, and we don't have the winner, so we reduce the k. Let's say k equals three. And uh, if k equals three, so probably this will be reduced. This neighbor will be reduced, and now we have three neighbors, and this house will still be predicted as a single family home. Okay. So that is the scenario that when we have a tie. And how can we reduce the complexity and how can we handle the overfit issue? So when we use many neighbors, so when we use more neighbors, uh, the, the model will become less complicated, okay? And the less overfit and also the accuracy will also drop, okay? So when we use more neighbors, the model will become simpler, less complicated, and also training accuracy will drop. So what does that mean? So here, let's say uh, we are going to predict the house type based on the, the year that house being built and also the house price. And we can see that here we have a single family home. Uh, so I guess here we have errors so that all the triangles are single family home. And we have the condos. The other two are condos. I don't know why they have different uh, color and also shapes. So that, that might be an error. So, okay, so we have condos and our single family home. And now you can see if we choose one neighbor in the prediction, and the result is pretty much similar as the training data itself. Okay, so it's pretty much similar because we only consider the nearest neighbors. Okay, uh, and if we look at 10 neighbors, and we can see that, uh, so if we have the more neighbors, and we can see that we have uh, uh, those houses are all predicted as a single family home. However, if we look at one neighbors, those houses are predicted as a townhouse. Okay, because for example, in this house, if we just look at the nearest neighbors, the nearest neighbor is townhouse, it will be predicted as townhouse. 
And for this house, if you look at the nearest 10 neighbors, it may have one townhouse, but here it may have nine or eight single family home. So that house was predicted as a single family home. And if you look at their, if we are counting their 50 neighbors, and now we can see all the houses are predicted as single family home. Okay, because no matter where you are located, and all your neighbors, the majority of your neighbors are all single family home. Okay, so that with more neighbors, uh, the complexity will decrease, the amount of complexity will decrease, the accuracy will decrease, and the accuracy will also decrease. So with the more neighbors, with all the more keys, and also it will be less overfit. Okay, less overfit. Uh, for regressions, we are calculating the average of the value. So regression is going to predict the, the numbers. Okay, so the uh, the exact one, two, three, four, so uh, the numbers. And then we're going to use average. So here, for example, that uh, for this variable in this location, and for this value, we calculate the average of their three neighbors. And average value of their three neighbors will be the predicted result for this one. So for example, uh, this is 1.2, and this is a point Eight, and this is negative 1.5 and the average will be 1.2 plus 0.5 minus 1.5 divided by 3 okay so that is the result for this uh, value and similar for the other values okay and we have the similar uh, patterns as we mentioned earlier so if we are only use a single neighbors each point in the training data will have an influence on the prediction. So the predict value will need to check all the data point. Okay, so for example here, and if we look at the one neighbors, the training score, and also the test, the training score will be almost 100. However, the test accuracy is pretty much low. Okay, because with one neighbors, it is very complicated model with with smaller keys number of keys the model com the model complicate is more complicated and the accuracy on the training data will be very high and and accuracy on the testing data it will be very low and if we consider more neighbors Okay, if we consider more neighbors, so we just we will not consider those outliers in that case. Okay, so you can see those outliers, if we consider the more neighbors, those outliers will not be considered. And in this case, we can say training score has dropped, but the testing score is increasing. Okay, the training accuracy has dropped, but the test accuracy has is increased. So it will be less or fit. And if we have even more neighbor, like 50 neighbors, we can see that the test accuracy and also training accuracy are, all, are, are almost the same. And the predict result is the most smoothest, is the smoothest prediction because it's not like, like this one. So it's very smoother. And the model will be less complicated. Okay, so the, as a number of the rows, the key increase the model will be less complicated. The accuracy on the training will drop and it will be less overfit. Okay, so it will be less overfit. So that is for the regressions. However, for the key nearest neighbors, um, we have a terminology called the curse of the uh, dimensionality. Okay. So that means that uh, when we have high dimensional spaces, points in the high dimensional spaces will not be close to each other to one another at all. Okay, high dimensional spaces mean that if you have more features, okay, more features, okay, if you have more features or if you have more columns, okay. So in low dimensions, 
the close end points tend to be closer than the average. And when you have a high dimensions, the likely that the closest point are no longer closer uh, to than average. Uh, so here, this is a, an experiment. So for example, here, uh, the curve represents the minimal distance divided by the average distance. The ratio of the minimal distance divided by the average distance. So we can see that when we have the fewer dimensions, let's say less than 20 dimensions, uh, the ratio is less than 0.4. Okay, so that the closest distance is only 40% of the average distance. And when we have, let's say, more than 100 dimensions, the close distance is equal to 80% of the average distance. So that means that they are no longer close to each other. OK, so it's very hard to find out the close neighbors. Uh, so if we look at an example of that in our house record, so for example, for the house record, if we only talking about the two features, like the number of the bathrooms and also bedrooms. OK, and then we can find out the house that are very close to, to each other. So some houses have two bedroom, bathroom, three bedroom, two bathroom. OK, and also two bed, uh, two bathroom, uh, four bedrooms. OK, uh, so we, we can eat find out the uh, the point that are very close to each other. So however, if we are talking about more features, like the uh, number of senior people, OK, number of the adult, like the uh, working people, and also number of the children, then the difference will be big. So this house has one senior people and also two adult and also one children. OK, this house has zero senior, one adult, zero children. And this house has four senior, zero adult, zero children. OK, and also you can add more features. So you can say by adding more features, the house tend to be different. More differences uh, will be added in their um, uh, dimensional, multi-dimensional space. OK, so that is called curse of the dimensionality. So basically, when you have when you have more features, the sample data tend to the the data sample tend to be different from each other. So that means that when you want to use nearest neighbors in higher dimensions, for example, if you have one hundred dimensions, one thousand dimensions, uh, do some kind of dimension reduction first. Okay, do some kind of dimension reduction first. For example, in this case, so for those three features, you can just have one feature, let's say, is the number of people. OK, so in this case, we have four people, one people, and also four people. OK, so you can aggregate some features together. OK, so that is some uh, some uh, feature engineering, so creating new features, and also drop some uh, less important features. OK, so that is a dimensional reduction. Or you can do the principal component analysis which is the PCA, OK, that can reduce the number of dimensions, which we will talk about PCA later this semester. OK, so to sum up, so there are two important parameters in a key nearest neighbor uh, analysis. One is the number of the neighbors. So remember that if you have more numbers, the model will be less complicated and it will also be less overfit, OK, if we consider more numbers. And also, how do you want to measure the distance? So in our examples, the distance is measured um, by using a formula that we said earlier, the, the, the uh, linear algebra calculations, um, because all the features are numbers. So the numbers of the bedrooms and also number of the bathrooms. So that is easier to calculate the distance. So what if the features are not numbers, like are categorical data, like the house type? type of the house, like some are single family home and also some are condo and also townhouse, then how do you measure the distance? OK, can you do that? OK, so we are going to answer that question in our lab. So so to measure distance for the uh, numeric number data, so that's very easy to measure. But for the categorical data, so can you do that? Can you measure distance? 
or can you use k-nearest neighbors for new uh, categorical data? The model is easy to extend, uh, understand. So hopefully that is the case in our class. It is easy to uh, understand. And also it's normally a good baseline method. So when you want uh, for to consider more advanced technologies. So uh, you, you, you apply k-nearest neighbor first, and also you can compare the result against the other models like neural network, etc. So when your training data is very large, the prediction can be very slow. So it does not scale well. Okay, when your prediction is very large, the prediction will be very slow. And also, rescaling your data can improve the performance. So remember that in the SVM, also requires that you should rescale the data so that uh, uh, your import, the performance can be improved. And also, this one does not work well with too many features because we, as we mentioned in the previous slide, the curse of the dimensionality. Or it does not work well if you have a lot of zeros in some features. So that is called the sparse data set. So for example, that if one feature is called like the, uh, do you have uh, the number, okay? So the number of the smart devices, okay? So let's say most of the houses, they may not have any smart devices and just one single, just one house that has a smart device. So if a lot of uh, samples, uh, data samples or rows that have zeros, so that's called sparse data set. And KNN does not work well with a sparse data set as well. 